Greetings and salutations, it's me James, your BA Sensei. This time around, this video is going to be about Power Query. Uh, recently, the last day or two, I ran into a little business problem where I had a data set with a lot of errors in it, and I pushed it into Power Query to do some analysis, and it gave me a lot of trouble. So I had to dabble around with um, is error and try and otherwise. You know, run a lot into otherwise in this tutorial. So let's look at how we deal with errors inside of Power Query. Okay, cool. We have a data set over here. We got total sales costs, and we got um, the ratio the ratio of cost to sales. Okay, cool. In a specific date, there are some errors in this data set. So let's quickly pull this into Power Query. You say from table, pull it in. So first thing we do is let's convert this to date. Whoop, whoop, and we convert these two to full numbers. And this one we convert to decimal number. Excellent. So you can already see there's an error over there. So let's quickly just show the problem. Let's close and load. So I'm going to bring the data set back. And this is where the business problem gave me some issues. I'm like, oh, shit, what's going on? So you can see that there's 10 errors in this data set. And if you look at that, it will actually take you back into Power Query and show you where the 10 errors are. Okay. But um, there are a couple of ways you can deal with errors. So you can see on the dates, we have a couple of errors. What you can do is you can right click and you can say, uh, remove errors. But what happens, you remove the error. But you can also say, replace errors with some value. But the problem is you don't really see what the errors are. So what happens if you want to see, you don't want to lose any data, but you actually want to also see what the actual errors are. So what I'm going to show you is actually a very handy little function. So let's add a new column. Let's call this custom. Let's, this function is called try. And we're going to try, let's say we use date. Try date. We say, OK, cool. So what it does, it's, it gives you a little record thing there, so you can expand that. And what it will do is it will actually expand it to the next level. It's quite important to understand. And then you can see anything anything that has an error would have be a true. So I can see what was an error. So these were errors because the date values. Let's, I want to get the message. What is the message here? The error. We can go a little bit deeper into the Excel error. You can see the actual error message is... The date format wasn't correct. We couldn't parse it into input. Okay, cool. So that's quite handy to know. So what we're going to do is I'm going to keep this custom column here, which basically was the, as you saw, was just us going, saying try. What I'm going to do now is let's say I want to return a list and see what the actual errors are. So let's quickly add a custom. We say um, error or value. Okay, so we can say if that custom we just created now, let's say custom has error. So when it is an error, then return. It's going to return. Return custom, but then return. Return the error, yes, and then return the message, yes. Else, return custom, and just the value. Cool, when you do that, it's going to give you a nice list of dates, but then when it runs into a problem date, it's going to tell you we can't pass the date because of that. Okay, that's a pretty cool thing to do. Okay, so another thing that we can do is let's add another little... Thing here. Let's. I'm going to introduce you to the otherwise function. Uh, let's say otherwise function. Okay, cool. So that how oh, this one works is actually quite simple. We say try. Let's say we try the date, and then if the date doesn't work, we do otherwise. Otherwise, give us the date mm, twelve. 31, 12, 99. Yes. Cool. Cool. So now if it ran into an error, what it's going to do, it's going to return a different value. Okay. So that's quite cool. So then you can have other value put in there, which is excellent. And another rather cool use case would be if we pull an Excel, let's say we pull a data source from a folder and we pull Excel workbook one. 
but for some reason X, XR Workbook 1 um, gives us an error, then I could say try XR book, uh, Workbook 1. Otherwise, if it's not available, try XR Workbook number 2. Let me quickly show how that would work. So now you're in Excel. Let's say you want to pull from new query from file. You want to pull it from Excel. I want to pull it from Workbook 1. Yes. It's going to pull it into Power Query. It's excellent. So I pull it from table, transform. It's pulling it into Power Query. So once it's into Power Query, what we can do is, see, so if we look at the source, that comes from, from that URL over there. But if we look at the advanced things, advanced script, we can actually go in here and we can say try. So try this Excel workbook. Yes. Okay, number one. If that's not available, otherwise based. Okay, and I'm going to put workbook number two in here. Okay, cool. So now we say, cool. Excellent. Everything works beautifully. It runs. Oh, it's wonderful. Okay, cool. So now what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to take this file one, I'm going to take it away and I'm going to move it to somewhere else. So now, as you can recall, if we rerun this, it's actually going to break. But what's going to happen is, let's say, let's refresh. And it didn't break at all. Big Why? Because it looked at a different file. How cool is that? Excellent. I hope these, um, these little tips helped you. It really did help me today um, in resolving my little business issue of here. Have a great day.